What's going on YouTube? This is SB3 and today I'm going to be giving a bit of a breakdown and a, a review of what I think of Peacock TV after the initial three round residency that they had in Houston. Uh, so today is really going to be more of a, a quick video, just to, an update on my side, just to show you um, how to access the Supercross rounds, how to access them after the fact and during. Um, and then give my honest review on it, what I think of it as they move into rounds four, five, and six in Indianapolis. So, um, going to be a pretty quick video. Honestly, I I like the way that they had it set up initially. Ah, uh, no, 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 I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> uh, so, if you guys have followed the channel at all recently, you'll know that I've had my issues with uh, the AMA and uploading videos to YouTube. So... It's been a bit of a, a rough patch trying to get everything done, so I'm playing it super duper safe, trying not to get myself in any hot water over the next couple of weeks. But uh, my honest review with Peacock so far is I like the, the platform that it's on. I like the way that it's set up. Um, I think it needs to be executed a little bit better. The reasoning behind that is, and I've heard this from other people whenever, whenever I've talked to them about Peacock, is that the streaming quality seems to dip down a little bit during like the main event, I had several instances during the last uh, the Saturday's main event specifically where the the feed would just get locked up and it would it would go into a buffering screen and it, it would do it until I backed out and re-entered the the video. So that was a little frustrating. It did it on that that Tuesday night too. So it it seems to be a, a little bit of a consistent problem, which is not going to be good moving forward if they can't get that ironed out. Um, I don't know if that goes back to being an issue with just maybe the server capabilities weren't quite ready to handle however many people were coming in and watching the races, or if it was just something that was more of like a freak accident thing that's happened the last couple times, or, you know, maybe it doesn't go over to smart TVs very well. I, I don't know. Um, all I know is that it's been a, a consistent thing that happened a lot during round two, and it happened a little bit during round three. Um, with that being said, round three, I was only able to watch the main events. So I was able to watch the 250 mains, and I was able to watch the 450 mains. And it happened two or three times, specifically on my Sony TV. And to me, on a platform like that, that shouldn't be happening. But, and, and I mean, the last time it happened before the end of the 450 main event, it fixed itself. It buffered for a second, caught up, and then it was fine. Um... A lot of people initially attributed that to my my internet. I have gigabit internet, so I mean technically, it shouldn't be a problem. The smart TV, the Sony TV, was the only thing I had on at the time, and that was it. I was on my smartphone, but I was on my my cellular. I wasn't on Wi-Fi, and you you know that's my biggest gripe with it is is the drop in can in quality and the the inconsistency with the buffering and and load times and stuff like that, but um, they've continued on with the actual, there's no ads, which shocked me a little bit. There, there are ads during the qualifying sessions, which if I remember back whenever it was with NBCSN, it was a lot of the same stuff where it, it was relevant to the sport, but it was still ads. Main event didn't have any ads, it just did the normal commercial break, and then you stare at a bulldozer or a part of the track for four or five minutes go do other things and then you're fine. Um, moving forward, personally, I would like to see something filled with that. I don't want ads, but dead air. I mean, it gives me time to go do things, but I would like to see some... It was more so with the the NBC Sports Gold. You, you know, you were paying the, quote, premium price for the product, and I wanted to see a little bit more of, like, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff, maybe some extra interviews that you weren't going to see with, you know, TV, for example, but... Now that it's moved on to Peacock TV, and this is more of a, definitely more of an affordable price point at four ninety nine a month, um, or I think it runs out to be sixty bucks a year if you pay four ninety nine a month. I think, if I remember right, if I can math. <laughs> um, but you really have to four ninety nine a month to me. It's it's attainable. It's something that's it's not a big scary number versus NBC Sports Gold was a. I think eighty nine ninety nine. I never got it on promotion because I'm dumb and didn't buy it when it was on promotion. But um, you, you know, you're looking at it, and and the ninety dollars like that. That's to to a lot of people, ninety dollars is a lot bigger of a pill to swallow than 
five dollars a month and even paying that year up front which i looked at it i would have rather paid the year up front i couldn't find it on my peacock um subscription anywhere so i'm just paying them the monthly service so which that's fine that's it's i got it going on my credit card it's not a big deal it's not something i'm going to think about um and i'll have access to supercross so basically the way that you have to find it and i've done this in previous videos so this is going to be a little bit of a recap for people who haven't seen the previous videos but basically you have the 2020 supercross season if you come into Peacock, I'm on a web browser, but if you do the same thing and you type in Supercross, the only thing that's going to come up is the 2020 season. And initially, I was thinking this was going to come up in, um, and it was going to originally have it, like season two was going to be the 2021 season, and it was just going to update it throughout the season, which to me would have made sense. Um, but you'll notice here that they don't really have anything. They have the trailer for the 2020 Supercross season, and then they have all 17 rounds, and it's just the the main events, or not the main events. I'm sorry. It's just the you know the the main show, the night show. It's not any of the qualifying sessions um, or anything like that, which kind of bums me out. I would have liked to see the qualifying sessions, but that's just me. It's not a necessity. Um, but this does open a door. If Peacock is the new way that they're going to stream Supercross and Motocross, this does open a door for them to add previous seasons. If they choose to. I mean, I could see them adding in the 2018, 2017, 2016. They could go all the way down and they could adjust it. Instead of saying season one, they could say 2020 season. I mean, it seems like it'd be relatively easy enough to add more seasons into the AMA Supercross and just keep it like that. So I like that. I do not like that you can't find Supercross, like the main event or like the night show or the day show or whatever they're going to do by typing in Supercross. You can't find the live content. So what you have to do initially is you go to over to, so depending on where you're at, you'll go to browse and you go over to sports. And then it's always gonna be in the live and upcoming, which I don't know if they'll show Supercross because it's a week out, a little less than a week out. But, yeah, okay, so here it is, round four. It's a little bit of a roundabout way to get there. I hope that they're able to optimize it a little bit and get it to where you can type in Supercross on the day of. And I'll preface what I'm saying now by saying I haven't tried searching it on my computer by typing in Supercross when the event's actually live. Um, I think because it, it knows my search history and it knows that I've watched Supercross before, it does pop up whenever it's live um, pretty quick. So, oh, they got round five too. Sweet. Okay, so it looks like they're showing the the way they show the events is, and well, let's see. You can add it to your watch list. I haven't done that yet. Okay, so I'm gonna add. Sorry, I'm learning this stuff kind of on the go. <laughs> um, but it looks like you can add them into your watch list ahead of time, and it shows the the watch time. So February second, twelve thirty is qualifying. It'll be three hours and thirty minutes. And I actually like the way that they're doing the, I'm calling them the day shows because Supercross or the main events are considered the night shows. Um, but I do like how they're adding in, they're not making the qualifying sessions just 10 minutes of qualifying and then you're done. Um, I like how they're turning it into more of like a day show. It's qualifying 250s BA, 450 AB. And then they talk, they do some interviews, they do different things to help build the show in between it. Um, and then they're able to flow into the second qualifying sessions, which really, which really to me, it helps keep everything going versus just dead air. Or, hey, come back in an hour and we'll we'll see you for the second qualifying session. So I like what they've done with that side of it because it makes it more of a more of an experience for maybe less experienced uh, people. It gives people more of a reason to watch than ten minutes of qualifying. Um, which anybody that's been around the sport for a while, I like watching the qualifying sessions. I would be okay with it being a 30-minute show that showed just the qualifying sessions and then they're done. But I, I get where they're coming from with it, and it helps really expand on the, the Supercross series as a whole. Um, but as you can see, I've added them to my my watch list, and they're sitting here right right now ready for me to watch. So moving forward after round five probably i'll go through and i'll add round six and seven if it gives me the opportunity to um, ahead of time so that way i don't have to go searching for it but whenever you are watching again like this is just showing 
you're browsing, you go to channels. I couldn't find it on channels unless it was live. I don't particularly like that myself, but um, the way I found it is I did browse and then sports. And then it's in the live and upcoming and it always showed up as it was happening. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Peacock as a whole. It's not a whole lot different from NBC Sports Gold in terms of the way the broadcast works. Uh, but it's at least a little more attainable in terms of price, upfront costs and stuff like that. But whenever you look at like the the way Peacock works, it's it's attainable. You get that free the free Peacock TV where you don't have to pay anything for it um, to get the baseline of stuff with ads. I am very very happy that. Supercross was like, hey, we're not going to have ads, but then Peacock was going to come in and add their their ads because technically at the four ninety nine price point, you're sitting at a um, at their where, you, where it would show ads otherwise. So I'm glad that they were able to actually get that worked out where there's not any ads. Though whenever I'm staring at a bulldozer for five minutes, I, I would almost rather have something there, but it gives me time to go get a drink or go get other things like that, and I'm not sitting there waiting for something to happen that's not there. Um, but that would be my only my critique on it. The quality on it can be worked out, but that could also be a, a, a plethora of different things that may not even be on Peacock's end. Um, theoretically, it shouldn't be on my side because of the internet and the way I set up. Is I don't have other things running, so I'm trying to put myself in a situation where the buffering shouldn't be happening, but it is. So I, I don't know. I, it could be a bunch of different things, and it may not even be anything that's in within Peacock's control. They could also be trying to figure out the servers and, and trying to get things to work like that. So it just could be a bunch of different things. And I think they'll they'll get it sorted out, and um, hopefully moving forward, Peacock, they're able to grow the sport from what it's at and, and things like that. But other than that, that's all I really had planned for the video today. I just wanted to go through and show you guys, um, again, kind of recap what I thought of it, um, positives, negatives, and things like that, and and close it out with that. Um, I might do a mid-season review just to see if they clicked out any or clicked off any of these different issues that I brought up, um, or if they've added like a season or any kind of features or anything like that that um, might make it easier for War Supercross fans to find the races. Um, that I will say the first time I tried doing it, it took me a little bit to find it because I originally tried searching Supercross and and nothing came up. Uh, minus the, the 2020 season. So it, it was a little crazy trying to find it at first, but once I found it, it, it made sense in, in, in a way. I mean, you go to sports, you go to live and not coming in, you're there. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for this video, guys. If you like seeing this where you got my ugly mug on camera, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. I'll make sure to, to make more, more videos with it on there. If you prefer just with videos like this specifically, um, where I'm doing a review or where I'm going over something and you'd rather just see the full screen, let me know. I won't be offended. Don't be mean to me. I, I promise. I, I'll take my camera off if it's needed, but <laughs> don't yell at me. Um, but other than that, that's all I really got for this video. Um, based off the poll I put up, you guys are looking to see MX News and MX Gaming, uh, primarily MX News, so I'm going to be looking into doing more videos on that side. And uh, Let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see. If you guys want to see like race recaps in, in terms of my thoughts on the race or MX News, like, oh man, so-and-so's out for X amount of weeks um, and things like that, um, just give me give me some ideas on what you guys want to see in the comments. I want to make sure that I'm providing content that you guys actually want to see, not just filling up a, a space on, on your YouTube channel to, to, to put a video out just to put it out. I want to make sure the content that's going out there is quality. I want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to get the news that you want to hear. So if you don't want to hear about Dean Wilson apologizing because he said he messed up and, and stuff like that, then I'm not going to put content out that you guys don't want to see. Um, I'm still working on trying to get everything sorted out so I can try to find a way to get these Supercross videos to show, but I'm not having too much luck right now. Um, finally got myself out of YouTube jail <laughs> or whatever it was. Um, but yeah. That's, that's all I got for this video, and if you guys like these videos and you're, you're here for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend so we can keep growing this community, and I will see you guys in the next video.
拜拜。